Well, in the last video, we looked at the science behind Mario Kart's anti-gravity and their ludicrous gliders. This means that today, we're jumping into some solid, reliable scientific facts, right? Nope. Instead, we're just going to keep digging deeper into sci-fi technology and talking about how it would inevitably go wrong. This time with giant robots, pilots, and shotgun blasts to their backsides. Hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Science Of, the show where I slowly overanalyze your favorite game shows and more. Today, we're back in the realms of EA-owned sci-fi franchises, but instead of looking at the bright and colorful creature creator that was Spore, today we're taking a look at the grim and gritty Gundam game series Titanfall to look at the physics behind these juggernauts, specifically the pilots that control them. But before we begin, this episode was recommended through my Discord. If you want to suggest episode topics or chat science gaming and more, then make sure you check it out in the description and pinned comment. Today, we're looking at Titanfall, the sci-fi mech series developed by Respawn Entertainment all the way back in 2014. And whilst this team would go on to produce the critically acclaimed Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, they started out by developing the Titanfall series in 2014. Whilst this was the flagship franchise from Respawn, the original Titanfall release was removed from subscription services as recently as March of this year, and this makes the future of the franchise incredibly doubtful, with Respawn's upcoming games all being focused on a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. The gameplay in Titanfall is pretty much FPS 101. Similar to other first-person shooters like Halo or Call of Duty, you get awarded points for fighting enemies, their titans, and for each new and unique way you can take them down. The main way that Titanfall differs from other FPS games is to focus on fast reflexes and arena traversal, with the player being able to parkour around a wide range of interesting environments. Throughout Titanfall, you'll be moving around both inside the giant mech titans and outside with the help of specialized armor and jump kits. Jump kits are small jetpacks that are worn around the waist of Titan pilots with a set of two small thrusters on either side of the hips. Throughout the game, pilots rely on this advanced mobility to help them navigate their way around a battlefield, using jump kits to wall run, jump kick, slide, and that classic gaming double jump. But how likely are these jump kits to work in the real world? To figure this out, we need to do a few things. First of all, we need to figure out how much force these things are putting out because the jump kit exposes energy to slow down its pilots in the form of short bursts. And as you can imagine, depending on the power behind those bursts, it could be like a shotgun blast being fired up your spine every time you do a double jump. We've already done a lot of force-based equations here on the channel, looking at the impact force with blue shells and glass balls. Today, we're doing something a bit different, looking at upward force instead of gravity to see how much energy is shooting into the pilots. From there, we can convert this energy into power, see just how much damage would be caused to the pilots. And whilst we might not know what gravity and physics are like on these alien worlds, we'll be looking at the jump kit within Earth's gravity. So we're talking 9.81 newtons of gravitational force throughout. There is one big obstacle when trying to accomplish this, however. Titanfall is a solid FPS, but that first person perspective is going to significantly limit how well we can do measurements of player height. And this really limits our ability to see our jump kit whenever we go to do a double jump or fall from a tower. Normally, to figure out the force from a jetpack, we'd need to use a specific thrust equation, but this requires all kinds of figures that we wouldn't be able to measure, such as the fuel to air ratio and the mass flow rate. So what are we able to measure? Well, we can measure the distance moved, we can get the mass of our pilots, and we can get the time taken for that distance to be moved. And with those, we have the makings of a pretty solid force equals mass times acceleration equation. From the training level at the beginning of the game, we get a decent go at experimenting with the jump kit. And from these, you would find that a regular jump causes you to jump the same height as enemies, and then a double jump doubles that height. These soldiers are just shorter than the eyeline of the player character Jack Cooper, and thankfully, this is one of those games where my job in getting heights and weights is surprisingly easy, with Cooper's height being found on a wanted poster in Angel City. This poster shows that Jack is only 5 foot 8 inches or 1.7 meters tall. And judging by this, we can assume that enemy combatants are around the same size, give or take a few centimeters for their crouching. When we go to do a double jump, we're already in the air, so the jump pack is causing Cooper's full mass to travel a full 1.7 meters straight up. Jack's mass is also surprisingly easy to get, 
as it's given to us by its Titan BT7274 and its mass is 89kg with all of its equipment. Like with most double jumps, the increase in height is pretty much instant, taking less than a second for the maximum velocity to be reached. This means that the jump kit is accelerating over the course of less than a second, going from 0 to 3.4 meters per second in about 0.1 seconds, which gives us an acceleration of 340 meters per second squared. This is equal to over 760 miles per hour, and as you can imagine, this is going to provide a huge amount of force to Jack. More than 30,000 newtons of force going straight into his spine. But to get an idea as to what kind of impact this force is going to have, we need to turn this force into energy and that energy into power. In order to calculate the positive work done by the jump kit, we need to multiply the force by the distance it's applied for. So it's a simple case of multiplying 30,260 by our distance of 1.7 meters to give us 51,442 joules of energy, which we can then convert into power by dividing by the 0.55 seconds that it's applied for the double jump. This gives us 88 kilowatts of power, a pretty staggering amount, even if it's less than a Mario Kart blue shell. I kind of expected a jump pack to provide a pretty solid boost firing straight up Jack's spine, but what is this force likely to do for his health? Given the force is acting perpendicular to the spine, and therefore the spinal cord, we need to know just how much compressive force the human spine is capable of taking. The human spine is made up of four distinct sections. The cervical curve, the thoracic curve, the lumbar curve, and the sacral curve. Each vertebrae consists of a few components. The weight-bearing component, the vertebral body, that forms the anterior part of the vertebrae, which is lined with a higher lean cartilage. The vertebral arc that forms the lateral and posterior aspect of the vertebrae, which is made up of several bony prominences and acts as the attachment sites for muscles and ligaments. To me, it would seem that the jump kit would cause fractures in the lower parts of the spine more than the top, so we'll be looking at the lumbar and sacral curves. There are three types of compressive fracture that could come from the jump pack. A wedge fracture that occurs at the front of the vertebrae, collapsing the bone in front of the spine leaving the back undamaged, a crush fracture that causes the entire bone to break, and a bust fracture that involves some loss in height of both the front and back walls of the vertebral body. These fractures can be incredibly unstable and result in a progressive deformity or neurological compromises. Over 30,000 newtons of compressive force acting directly into the vertebrae is more than enough to cause some kind of spinal fracture. In fact, according to a study from 1986, into the impact of vertical impacts upon spinal injuries, it was found that head impacts of between 3,000 and 7,000 newtons would be enough for upper thoracic fractures. But of course, this is an older study. What if we wanted something a bit more recent? This study into compression-related lumbar spine fractures from 2013 gives us a far better understanding into the impact that compressive forces will have upon the lower back. From this, we find that a compressive force of 6,000 newtons will lead to fractures being observed in the lumbar area of the spine, well within the limits of the jump kit. And given that the force is being applied directly to the spine through the jump kit, we could easily imagine the full impact force being placed onto the spine. So there we go. If any normal person tried to tie a jump kit around their hips, they'd probably end up in a wheelchair. And the pilots of Titanfall are no different. They may receive augmentations to make them mentally faster, but their bodies are pretty regular. They have some padded armour, but I kind of doubt that's going to have much protection from the forces mentioned in this video, especially if they're applied directly to the spine. This isn't exactly surprising either, as most sci-fi franchises have technology that is meant to look cool rather than be useful with real physics. But in concept, the jump kit isn't entirely useless. It just requires a lot more padding around a pilot. Maybe a ton of bubble wrap or something. As always, if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help combat the ever-changing and frustrating YouTube algorithm, then make sure you share the video to help my channel grow. If you have any scientific subjects or topics that you'd like to see me cover in the future, then please tell me in the comments down below. As well as that, follow me on Twitter to get updates on the latest science of videos, and join my Discord for chats about science, gaming, and more. But until then, this has been the Science of Titanfall. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for game based content, then you can join me over on Twitch, where I livestream three times a week playing all manner of games suggested by the community. Or if you want to support the channel even further, then you could also contribute to my Patreon, where you'll get behind the scenes access to the creation of all videos, as well as being able to vote on what the next Science of Video will be.